Okay, so welcome back to uh, my Let's Play for Skyrim. So before we get too far into the game, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my setup and how I'm going to be playing. So I play with the joystick. It is a Logitech Rumble uh, F510. I used to do uh, mostly gaming with key uh, keyboard, but I found that um, just controlling the motion gets to be kind of a pain in the butt. I also see. Yeah, once once he removes your bindings, then you finally have there you go. Take a look the ability to change gear and use weapons, stuff like that. So we want to actually get. Some initial stuff. And also, yeah, one of the mods that I am using changes how books are displayed in the game. And let me make sure I actually have this set up right. That's actually set up right. Okay, so the mods that I'm using are Follow the Space Core, which is just a fun little mod that came from Valve that uh, adds uh, a certain part of the game. Space Core uh, falls out of the sky and you can pick them up and carry them around, which is uh, kind of fun. Let's see, myself boots, and a key. Okay, that is cool. Let's keep moving. Actually, items, weapons. Oh, cool. You can use two swords. That's fun. Although it takes a lot of stamina. Um, I'm using Unread, Unread Books Glow, which is really useful because it will make uh, it makes spell books uh, show up uh, brighter so that you can. Um, can easily spot them because otherwise you just get tons and tons of books throughout the game. Uh, it just gets kind of unwieldy. Uh, the next one is lightweight poisons and potions. That is fun because weight management is a major issue in the game. Ooh. Whoa. Okay. Finishing move, nice. Let me see if I can get that door open. Although at some point I'm, I'm actually going to switch. Actually, we can go barehanded now. Um, let's make sure that I'm actually wearing armor, boots, helmet. Okay, cool. You do want to generally scoop up as much stuff as you can earlier, uh, early on in the game because you're going to want to sell it. That's one of the neat things that I find about uh, about this game, and that uh, in a lot of other RPGs, money stops being important pretty early on. Ooh, cabbage, sweet. Okay, but um, in Skyrim, there are plenty of expensive things to buy, and your uh, your not just things, but services, and you really are going to want those services. Damn, that dragon doesn't give up easy. Okay. So yeah, you can see. Yeah, scoop up some stuff. Scoop up some potions. Yeah, so um, while you do want to keep on um, gathering stuff to sell and stuff to level, level up your skills for alchemy and stuff like that, potions just weigh too much. And, and so it's, uh, so the mod makes them lighter, 
just uh, just meaning that you can carry a reasonable infantry of, uh, of potions around with you, and it makes the game a lot more fun. So, let's see, I have everything I need here. Done, then. This way. Okay, good. Let us step outside. And that is the ceiling that just fell in of us. Let's see. Now, eventually, uh, in this, I am going to also level up some one-handed skills. Uh, ooh, neat! I had not seen the fatalities for uh, for unarmed before, and that was pretty cool to see. Let's take this. There's how much stuff? Yeah, two sixty. So I'm actually kind of close to everything that I should have. Dragonborn, yeah, okay. So this is uh, one of the, the fun things in the game. Unlocking stuff happens through a minigame. So it takes... Let's see if I can manage to unlock this too. Sweet. A lock picking is another one of those levelable skills, and any skill that you level gives you progress towards the next level. Let's see anything I need here. And you will find yourself locking and unlocking stuff all throughout the game, so might as well take advantage of some free experience. Now, every time you attempt to twist the lock, it has the, um, there's this magic position that you have to find. And when you get close to it, the lock will rotate a bit and then fail to rotate anymore. So you just kind of have to, uh, but unfortunately, every, every time, Worry about yourself. every time the lock pick breaks, then you lose your uh, starting position. So you have to remember it. Just fine. Let's make sure. Yeah. Okay, he's following. Good. So the next mod I have is left hand rings. As a lefty, uh, oh come on, go. Already I've reached uh, fullness, so I need to drop some of the heavier things. Let's drop the iron mace, it's not worth that much. Okay. So there's two archers left out there. There's also Dragon Souls for Perks, which is a really fun mod. Because eventually, after you kill enough dragons, wow, such cool uh, unarmed finishing moves. Eventually, after you kill enough dragons, you end up, um, end up finding that the additional uh, shops that you can buy in the game, uh, they're not actually that useful. So that that's part of um, that's part of the uh, the shtick with this uh, with this particular episode of the Elder Scrolls, and that you are a character called the uh, the Dragonborn, whose coming was foretold, and you are not actually a normal human being or Kajit or whatever. Uh, is he still following me? No. I have to go back and get him. Uh, you actually are... Um, you have the soul of a dragon. Let's okay. see if we can find a way out. No, he's following me. I think. 
Come on. Let's see what this goes. And uh, and that tool of the dragon was placed into the body of a mortal by the chief uh, god in in this uh, world, and it was uh, done to. It was done for the purpose of giving the mortals a chance against uh, these very dangerous dragons. Uh, and so every time you kill a dragon, because you're the dragonborn, you actually swallow their soul. Um, but unfortunately, uh, what you can buy with swallowed souls ends up just not being, uh, or ends up being dragon shouts. But uh, again, eventually you're going to decide you're, you're going to need to be making decisions which dragon shouts to buy at any given moment, but eventually you'll find that the dragon shouts that are uh, that are uh, available to you just aren't that exciting anymore. Uh, Maybe it would be nice to do something else with those uh, with those dragon souls. So what this mod does is it actually gives you the option of of spending those those souls uh, on skills and on attributes instead. Uh, so spiders. spiders are not fun, and there are much nastier spiders later on in the game. Ooh, I'm actually getting kind of low on health here, so let's have a few healing potions. What next? Giant snakes. Fortunately, there are not giant snakes in the game. But yeah, so you can spend uh, those dragon souls with this mod on, uh, on attribute points, which you otherwise could only level up, or you could only increase by leveling up. Or you can spend them on uh, skill points, which you also ordinarily only could get through leveling up. Hold up. There's a bear just ahead. See ya. Two. I'd rather not tangle with him right now. You might be able to sneak by. Just take it nice and slow and watch where you step. Uh, another step mod step. that I'm using is uh, called um, Lighter Dragon Bones and Scales. Actually, let's, let's put on a shield. Let's drop the tunic. Yeah, just keep on ending up with way too much stuff. Oh. Carry oh, actually. By surprise. Go ahead. Watch your back. Oop. So, yeah, I definitely don't have much uh, sneak skill at this point. Okay, bear is killed. Grab its stuff. Good. I think we're almost out. Come on. Yeah, so lighter dragon bones and scales just reduces the weight of notoriously he uh, heavy uh, elements in the game that kind of prevent you from actually carrying anything else while you're carrying them. They are ridiculously heavy by default, and this makes them a little bit less heavy, but still, their weight can still get uh, out of hand pretty easily. Another mod I have is Mammoth Chickens, because chickens are awesome. Another mod I'm using is Skyrim Skills and Powers, which uh, gives you, uh, so it adds a whole bunch of spells to the game that just make it a lot more fun. Wait. So we hang out here with Hadvar. Another mod I'm using is Bandolier Bags and Pouches, which uh, adds craftable items that uh, that you can wear that will let you carry more stuff, which is probably not that realistic, but management of inventory in games like this generally isn't that realistic to begin with, so nothing lost, and just giving you the ability to carry more stuff means that you'll have a lot less hassle in running back to, uh, running back to town or running to your house to drop stuff off. So here now that we're at the cave, we're just going to scoop up some stuff. Um, basically, weight permitting, you want to be as kleptomaniac as your instincts probably are from games like this. Just grab everything. But 
I like to try and keep up with this uh, with this guy because it uh, he'll introduce you to other people in his hometown. So yeah, let's keep scooping up random bits uh, bits of, of stuff here, like flowers and butterflies, because one of the uh, one of the skills in the game is alchemy. And alchemy is pretty useful. It's actually mainly useful uh, as a um, as a source of funds in the game. I, I mentioned that you really have to manage your money, and you, I, yeah, being poor all the way throughout Skyrim means that you're gonna take a lot longer to uh, um, a lot longer to level up, and you won't have as many options open to you. Alchemy eventually becomes insanely profitable. So here, these are, yeah, they're guardian, st uh, guardian stones, um, you kind of have to pick your, um, you have to pick one of these and it increases the learning rate for whatever, uh, uh, for whatever set of skills you have, uh, or whatever set of skills you care the most about. I, for now, I'm going to go with the, uh, the thief skills. And he disapproves, that's fine. Later on, there is another Guardian Stone that I much prefer over, uh, over any of those, because each of these gives you a 15% learning bonus for all of its uh, relevant skills. All skills are in one of those three categories. But um, there's another stone uh, elsewhere that will give you a 15% bonus, or maybe it's 10% uh, to each. And because I tend to use a mix of, of skills, um, that usually ends up working out better for me. Keep on getting flowers and stuff for alchemy. Another skill I, I uh, have installed is um, Jean's uh, Squeaky Toys, which is just fun. Uh, there's some walls. <laughs> Kill a wolf, you want to grab its pelt. And that is because. That's because you can make leather out of its uh, out of its pelt, and then use that to level your smithing skill. Smithing is so. There's a few skills that you're really gonna want to pay attention to if you want to have the best gear near the end of the game. And that's smithing which lets you make weapons and armor from materials, and as you level it, you both get uh, better stats on armor that you improve, and you get uh, you get the ability to take skills that will uh, let you uh, op make entirely new kinds of, uh, of armor. Is that? Yeah, that is a mushroom that I can pick up. You also want uh, to learn enchanting, and you'll probably want to learn alchemy too. All of these will help. Uh, another skill that I, uh, or another mod that I have installed, which will end up being kind of relevant here, is the Khajiit Racial Rebalance, which um, ends up uh, giving the Khajiit an additional um, ability. Each race has its own uh, ability and sometimes weakness. Khajiit normally just have the bonus of doing uh, a lot of unarmed damage, which the Argonians have too, to a lesser extent. Um, this mod uh, also lets them take less damage from falling. Then uh, I have bound weapons, uh, redox, which uh, just adds a whole new uh, set of bound weapons to the game. And I think it might change the strength of bound weapons to make them stronger. If it does, that's kind of unnecessary. Bound weapons are already pretty strong. And. Uh, Let's see, Realistic Lighting. Uh, realistic Lighting is a graphics mod, and it basically makes the game a lot more cool by, uh, by making the lighting a lot more realistic, as you might guess from the name of the mod. It does happen to make much of the game uh, a lot darker than it would be without the mod, but, uh, but I think that's a plus. Oh, actually, I think he might want to sit here. 
So I will stand up and scoot over here so that I think he can sit down too. You two must be hungry. Maybe. Sit down and I'll get you something to eat. Okay, he will sit down. Cool. And uh, and then I have the uh, texture packs. And the texture packs just make everything look better. Presumably, I've actually never played without them. We will stop the Nelian when we were attacked. And here we're getting through the main plot of the uh, so there are a lot of branching plots uh, in the game, and each of them has a number of quests uh, associated with them. The dragon plot is probably the main quest in the game. It's I don't know if anyone else got out alive. And uh, it's actually the one that you're kind of nudged into if you follow one of the two people that you can follow from uh, the beginning uh, out of that initial city. Of course. Any friend of Hadvar's is a friend of mine. I'm glad to help however I can. Like I said, I'm glad to help in any way I can. But I need your help. We need your help. Oh, so, yeah, here he gives you some stuff. Might as well take anything you can you think would be particularly useful, or anything uh, particularly valuable that you can end up selling later. The Yara needs to know if there's a dragon on the loose. Riverwood is defenseless. We need to get word to Yarrow Balgraf in Whiterun to send whatever soldiers he can. If you'll do that for me. When you get to White Run, just keep going up. When you get to the top of the hill, there are dragons. Really Yarrow's palace. Like Good day. Hush, John. So yeah, uh, initially, you, make at home. you basically uh, you want to get as do as much as you can to improve your um, ability to survive the first. Uh, first few levels, because naturally, as you keep on living, you're going to uh, become better in combat, but initially you're going to have a pretty rough time, so you need every edge that you can get. Did you really see a dragon? So the quest lines in the game, you need to, uh, you need to deal with the dragons, you can help either side with their war against the other. You can become a vampire, and there's a bunch of quests associated with that. You can become a werewolf, and there are a bunch of quests associated with that. You can help uh, the um, College of, uh, of Wizardry. There are a bunch of quests associated with that. You can join the Thief's Guild, you can join the Assassin's Guild, you can help uh, the various Orc strongholds with their uh, difficulties. Um, you can join a guild of fighters called the Companions. Um, well, no, actually, that is the, the werewolf. Uh, and then there are a bunch of quests associated with getting uh, deep underground in the ruins of a race that no longer exists called the Dwemer. And just so you know, there are uh, a bunch of races in the game uh, uh, with a mer suffix. Uh, those are the elves. And the Dwemer, although they're commonly known as uh, as dwarves within this world, they're um, they're actually a variety of elf. Here we're gonna sell stuff we don't need to get a little bit more cash. Although you'll see in the lower right, he actually only has so much cash himself, so you can't sell absolutely everything. But you can definitely cut down on things you don't need. Now you can see the armor rating. You want to keep the best stuff for yourself and sell stuff that you um, that you're not going to use. Okay, so hide shield, iron shield. There's also there are two types of armor in the game: uh, light and heavy. I am going to focus on light armor, so I am going to sell basically any piece of heavy armor that I come across. 
the solution with that. And is there anything else I don't need? No. Good. And I see no hot the grindstone. If you've got the raw materials, you can use the forge to make something. Yes, actually. How about you smith me an iron? Tiger? Here we'll we'll get started on blacksmithing. And you'll see how the uh, how the crafting system works. So basically, anything that you have materials for will show up uh, bright here, and you can just choose to uh, to craft it. And you'll see how much it requires and how much you have. So this requires one iron ingot, one leather strip. So I will click it, and you'll see you'll see in parentheses that's how much I actually have. I made this. I'll put it over to him. Whatever Talk to him you again. Need. Show him the dagger I made. But it's a little dull. How about so crafting stuff, uh, anything you craft will always have the same stats. You looking for a new blade? But improving, improving stuff, and I actually meant to use the, the grindstone. You use the grindstone to improve weapons use that table to improve uh, that table to improve armor. So I improved the dagger, which he asked me to do, then I'll talk with him. This looks good. Now when you have a higher uh, crafting skill, or a higher smithing skill, then your improvements end up being uh, being more potent. So he wants to, to some leather tan, so let's do that. And you notice that I collected those wolf pelts. So every uh, every type of skin that you collect in in the game, or at least most of them. You the sneaky type. Ah, good. Let's see if you can make a hide helmet. You want to hide helmet? Here's the rest good. of what you need. Um, so each of those is going to be useful for um, for making armor that hide helmet and he will actually ask us to yeah. what do you want cat huh. let's improve the fit take this leather to the workbench I'll ask for it to be improved and you'll see in parentheses fine as your smith skill goes up you'll have uh, nicer words in there like awesome Very excellent great. groovy well maybe not those but uh, better words you have talent why don't you keep that dagger and helmet? Maybe you'll remember me. So yeah, that's a little bit of free leveling. And if you go in your skills here and scroll out of the magic into smithing, you'll see that progress bar uh, down there. And yeah, when you have free uh, skill points, you can spend them on things like this, uh, uh, like the steel uh, smithing perk which will let you make steel and eventually uh, elfin. But yeah, you need to have to be at a certain level to take each perk. Steel, huh? Anyhow, what we're going to do now is put on the stuff that we're intending to use. Hide helmet is 12. Imperial light helmet is 12. Okay, it's not actually any better. So we're actually going to sell him you looking for a new blade? this the hide helmet. Weapons and armor. because we don't need it. Let's put those gauntlets on. There they are. Let's see what other stuff we have that we can improve. So yeah, we can improve those gauntlets. They only get a little bit. Yeah, we're not getting a lot of improvement out of, uh, out of this, but every little bit helps. and still doing all this basic stuff. Let's uh, put healing into our favorites bar. And that'll let us have easier access to it so that we don't need to pull up the screen to access it in the future. We're not going to do anything with flames or night eye. Yeah, so these are the things that are in our favorites right now. So those are spells. 
We're going to do that now for for this shield, because occasionally we might put something else into our left hand, and being able to quickly rearm uh, is helpful. Let's also put the bow the so and the sword in there. Let's sell, sell the dagger, because it's less good than the... Uh, less good than the sword. Can we improve the sword? Maybe we can improve the sword. Because again, at this point in the game, every little bit helps. And so that's all that we're going to do with um, with this. So initially, do shield to block and sword swing to, to fight, or we can decide to go bare fisted with the shield. And of course, we can heal up really quickly if we have to, if we become injured. And you'll notice, so that gauge in the lower left is Magicka. It's the amount of magic that you have. Stamina is over to the right. You'll see stamina uh, uh, depletes if you run. I heard Luke and Young the other day about a thief breaking through a store. It wasn't me, honest. And we will also stop by the Riverwood Trader before we wrap up for today. Well, one of us has to do something. Well, I don't know what, uh, yeah, we did have a bit of a... So eventually this guy is gonna be to one of the most useful people in the game for you. An ornament, solid gold in the shape of a dragon's claw. You could? Got some and coins coming in from my life. Basically, you have to do this quest for him and a bunch of other th uh, things. And eventually, he's going to be the guy that you uh, that you sell most of your stuff to. The sooner you trinkets, odds and ends. Right now, he doesn't have a lot of money to buy stuff from you, but eventually, he'll have quite a lot. And I think it, we can also sell a lot of the miscellaneous foods that we. Took his gifts from that guy. And this gives us a little bit more, more money to work with. So that book. So we're good. So we're about ready to leave town. So we will save here and pick up with the next.